Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. So, under the pretense of maybe, possibly, Season of Discovery going into a classic plus direction, recently I did a video going over some of the secret cut content from Vanilla WoW that could be contenders. Some people think that the most classic that you could possibly get would be content that the original developers planned. And thanks to some helpful people in the comments. Ashbringer, Blade of the Scarlet, High Lord. Huh. So there's much more that I missed, so I wanted to do a follow-up video here. First, starting with Ulduar. Oh, Ulduar is old, a facility Ulduar. constructed by the Titans, which are the godlike creators of Azeroth, as a prison for one of the old gods, the king of BJs, yogg -Saron. The Titans wanted to shape and order the world, sort of, and the old gods opposed them and sought to corrupt it, and eventually the Titans gained the upper hand and started imprisoning the old gods, and Aldor was created to house yogg -Saron. So eventually, players would of course visit this in the Wrath of the Lich King expansion, but believe it or not, it was planned to be in Vanilla World of Warcraft. Also, do you see what that says right there? <clears throat> the bay entrance to Ulduar when it was uh, its own continent to the southwest. It says, the Maw. <laughs> craft. In fact, it was to be its own entire continent south of Kalimdor. What you're looking at is a concept map. Also, the, the right hand, the Eastern club. Kingdoms was called Azeroth. See that right there? EK was called Azeroth at this time. Najatar, right next to the rift. Yep. Tomb of Sargeras was always there. There's also like a grid drawn around the impact of the uh, well splitting. Development in 1999. Also funny to note that Kalimdor itself was way smaller. A yeah, fraction Kalimdor's of the size of the Eastern Kingdoms. So interesting that Cthune maybe wouldn't have been the only old god that players would encounter in vanilla. No one can agree on what Classic Plus is, but... What I often see are new zones. Um, in the last ones, we talked about some unfinished ones here and there, such as Hyjal, Aldum, Kothalas, and these would eventually be fleshed out in later expansions, and as would Aldwar, but only as an enclosed raid, not a continent, so right. I think this could have some potential. Really, What if they decided to expand Ulduar to where it wasn't just a raid, but like we found out that there was like more to the north or like hidden under the sea or something like that? It'd be cool if in uh, the uh, the last Titan, if when we go back to Northrend, if they reveal that there's a little bit more to that whole facility than what we saw. As far as they got was just this map. They never made the train for the zone or any modeling or anything, but it was planned. In the last video, we talked about the mostly abandoned Ashara zone. There's a cut MOBA battleground there, as well as an abandoned dungeon, and... Somehow I missed the biggest one, and that's the Timberma Gate. In the northwestern area of the zone, you'll find a bunch of fur bogs wandering about, and tucked away in the corner is a very large and imposing gate that looks like it was meant to be something. There are a couple of theories. That almost looks like a big Titanic, uh, that could be old, like, Titanic or Dwarven style, um, it's fur bogs as well, so I feel like we're talking, this is very much like a trog situation. Ancient, more native... Uh, primal species around mountainside vault that we never get to go into. That just for for some reason screams trogs to me. As to what? First is another dungeon, Ashara, because the developers realized that a zone that's essentially a giant cliff is really annoying to navigate, was kind of abandoned, and the whole area is ripe for unfinished content, as mentioned earlier. So some theorize that this was intended to be a furbolg dungeon, or maybe possibly even a raid. The other theory, and this one is more interesting, I think, is that this was thought to be the fourth entrance to the Timberma Hold, which you may know as the series of tunnels connecting Moonglade, Fellwood, and Winterspring together. Inside the tunnel, you can sort of find this out of place wall, possibly indicating a quick patch job mm. once the idea was scrapped. And this is where it gets really interesting. Looking at the world map, if this tunnel was indeed connected to Ashara, which is pretty far, it would go right under one of the largest pieces of cut content in vanilla, the zone that we mentioned in the first episode, Mount Hyjal. 
Now Hydrail does have a blocked entrance at the end of that elite demon infested area in Winter. It's kind of wild to me that they didn't have Hyjal and Vanilla WoW. Like that's kind of wild to me. So they added that in Burning Crusade as a as a raid, but that's a that's a time walking raid, isn't it? Cataclysm. The battle for Mount Hyjal is a cata dungeon or raid. Considering its significance in Warcraft 3, yes. What do you mean considering its significance? That would mean that they have a that they should be doing it. Battle for Mount Hyjal is a BC raid. That's what I thought. It's TBC raid and Kata, it's a zone. Right. So it's dude, so you're telling me, wait. So you are telling me that it took it took till the first expansion to actually do the raid or see the place at all. And in that raid, it's basically just you time walk, time walking and fighting Archimonde. Right? I remember you fight Archimonde at the end and you stop him from getting to the tree. What the fuck is the point of that? Like, I don't really remember why we did any of that. And is that consequential or inconsequential? I don't know. But then you're telling me it took two more expansions for them to put Mount Hyjal in the game? That, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Like, what? Like, I get that you want to do something right. But, like... What the fuck? Spring, where people used to farm for the Eye of Shadow. But as some of you know, when it was finished in Cataclysm, it had those Barrow Den tunnels as part of some quests. So I wonder if maybe the original plan was to connect Ashara here and halfway between it, it could connect to Mount Hyjal and maybe serve as an alternate entrance where if you took the time to grind out reputation with the Timber Maw, you could gain safe passage instead of going through this gauntlet of elite demons. That'd be sick. If Classic Plus were to ever be a thing, and they were to implement Hyjal. I think this connecting area, as described, would be a really cool addition and sort of knock out two pieces of cut content at once. It's a great idea. And next, we have the Dalaran Bubble in the Altrek Mountains. Dalaran is known as the City of Mages. It was founded after the War of the Ancients during the early days of human civilization, and it became the center for all of the mages in Azeroth, sort of like the Citadel from Game of Thrones, with the Kirin Tori essentially being the maesters. They remained neutral throughout the various conflicts within the world until the Second War, where they rightfully and understandably aided the Alliance against Horde Filth. And during the Third War, <laughs> it was attacked directly by Arthas, who summoned Archimonde inside of it, leading to its destruction. Well, he summoned Archimonde outside of it, and then he used a big... yeah. Lore-wise, in Vanilla, it's being rebuilt, and of course it wouldn't be until Wrath of the Lich King that it would be converted into a floating city and it would make its way to Northrend and serve as the main hub for that expansion. And then later the same for Legion. For now. I think that the existing major cities of for Vanilla now. are a really big part of its identity, so I wouldn't say this being a hub would be the greatest idea, but if we're talking new raid content post Nexramus, this could be a contender, I think. Like maybe our command forgot his anime pillow or something uh, and he comes back for it and it gets taken over by the legion we could have a demon so raid honest. something that vanilla didn't have kind of a tangent here but speaking of cut content and uh, giant pink bubbles protecting cities oh here we go the warlords of draenor expansion you might remember that shatter <sighs> despair and aware dude this is this is about to be tragic this is some of the just this is just some of the worst cut content this is just oh uh, this is this is this is this is tough this here's tough. Oh, this here's tough. The city had the same giant bubble protecting it, and it was surrounded by an army of elite demons. This ended up being Draenor's missing raid, as evidenced by this early screenshot. So, Draenor... Uh, not only that, but I hope he's going to talk about Bladespire Citadel. Gore Rune Ogre Palace? Pretty sure that's not what they ended up... That's Bladespire Citadel. We were also supposed to have Karabor as a fucking a hub zone, which didn't happen. Ashran. 
<clears throat> didn't have a D in it, and it was separated on its own complete other island, but Gorgron was apparently supposed to be somewhat to do with that. Then, <clears throat> to the northeast of Gorgron, we were supposed to have Farallon, which, <clears throat> for those who don't know, that says Elemental POI, Elemental Point of Interest. Very interesting for me. For those who don't know, Farallon <clears throat> is a is a a mass of land that is made out of the corpse of a fallen spore mound. So spore mound was fucking huge. Gron kicked its ass. They both fucking died. And when the when the spore mound fucking fell, part of it became Farallon. And Farallon, I believe, was supposed to be a realm that connected to the Emerald Dream. Um, there were uh, entities, uh, NPCs called the Farah or something like that, which are quadrupedal, almost um, centaur-like beings, but from Drenor. And I would, I really would have loved to see what they had planned for Farallon, because I think that it was supposed to be a way to show us that the Emerald Dream can link to other worlds, and we know that that is the case as well, based well, we it's suggested anyway through some of the dream journals that we find in the Emerald Dream patch 10-2. But it would have been really cool to to potentially have a, a dream connection to another planet. I think that just would have been really cool. And I think the Everbloom dungeon, which is literally in the actual game, ended up being right on the coast up here in Gorgron, right across the water from Farallon, is probably not an accident, considering, you know, considering what Farallon's supposed to be. <clears throat> also, inside of the Everbloom, you find primals who are plant creature people, very scary, who use like spore based mind control on things. And they're in there, uh, uh, trying to purify waters and do sorts of fucking mind control shit and breach into Azeroth, um, which they do successfully accomplish. I mean, they do accomplish that, so. You know, the link between worlds is accomplishable not just through something like the Dark Portal, um, but also uh, through places like the Dream. Well, Draenor today has the reputation of being one of the weaker expansions for a while. It could have been really reasons. good. One of them being the fact that there were just three raids. Blizzard. And the three raids were really good, man. I'm going to say it. High Mall was pretty, pretty damn good for a starting raid. Blackrock Foundry's fucking S tier. And Hellfire Citadel, I think, is also I think it's also S tier. I mean, I think HFC is 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 a phenomenal fucking raid. The only bad thing about it is the final boss, Archimond, which is fucking lame, and that kind of pissed me off. Uh, because I think they were supposed to save and use Archimond for Legion. I'm gonna be honest. I I like the idea that Archimond Archimond has some verifiably provable connections to the Emerald Nightmare, and I think it would have been really cool to fight Archimond as the final boss of the Emerald Nightmare. Um, that could have been interesting. You fight Xavius, Archimond, Gul'dan, kill Jaden, then you finish off with... Yeah, you fight Manoroth in, in the other raid, too. Yeah, I think Manoroth could have been a very acceptable final boss. I mean, think about this. You climb all the way to the top of Hellfire Citadel, and you fight Manoroth. That's how it should have ended. But remember what happens. No, 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 no. We gotta take a weird, obscure portal to the Black Gate... And then we're going to fight Archimond, who randomly got summoned in by Gul'dan? Like, fuck me, dude. No. Manoroth, in my opinion, was clearly meant to be the final boss. And it was hard enough that it could have been the final boss. And it's on top of the raid. Like, you're at the pinnacle of the raid. And then the final boss, you take a portal over to some other area. Like, wh what? What are we doing? Like, that's really dumb. So, I really am of the opinion that their original intent was to use Archimond as a boss in Legion. And I think that would have made thematically way more sense. And honestly, I'm going to say it, chat. The Emerald Nightmare shit, I don't even know if I feel like that fit in as well as it should have. I almost feel like the Nighthold should have come first. It should have been the Nighthold first. It should have been Gul'dan and the Illidan plot. We should have then gone and, st and gone into the Nightmare and, and discovered that Archimon was plotting a further thing there with Xavius. We then should have gone to the Tumisar garrison, sl slain, killed Jaden, and then we should have gone to Argus and fought Argus. And and I, I'm I'm sticking to that. I don't give a fuck. They should have done Nighthold first. They should have done En second. They should have done Tos third, and they sh and they should have. Yep, yeah. And it should have been. It would have been Legion, and it would have made sense because after you defeat Gul'dan, 
you have a cutscene at Dalaran where all the leaders are meeting, and I believe it's Khadgar who says, a Gul'dan and the devils that command him. The devils. Devils. Plural. The t yes, it's killed Jaden, of course, but it's also Archimonde, and I really think that they should have gone that route. But I think they ass-pulled Archimonde as a final boss for Wad because they were afraid that Manoroth wouldn't be cool enough. And that people, that it just wasn't going to hit. So I I, I I, really do believe that they just ass-pulled Archimonde and that he was supposed to be in Legion. Blizzard sort of half-jokingly stated for many years that in order to implement player housing, they would have to sacrifice a raid tier. So some think that the garrisons in Draenor was the reason for this. And in fact, if you go to the graveyard in the garrison, you'll find a marker labeled raid D tier. Yeah, like I said, kind of a tangent, but... Kind of funny that there are two instances of unfinished content involving cities sheltered by pink bubbles. And speaking of cities, next we have one of the most legendary unfinished areas of vanilla. I can't believe I didn't mention this in the last one, but that's Old Ironforge. So this isn't to be confused with Alpha Ironforge, which is essentially the same as the one we're accustomed to, but with two separate levels. Unlike many other things in this list, this wasn't scrapped due to time constraints, but instead from feedback that it was just too confusing and difficult to navigate, which eventually led to them downsizing it to one level. But they did leave behind an artifact from this Alpha Iron Forge. In the King's Room, you may have noticed a conspicuous gate off to the left side. Behind these gates lies a big secret, and there were a few methods of getting into it. The one that I remember is that at a certain point in the game's history, for some reason, you could initiate a duel right here next to the mailbox near the bank. And if you started it and you made a beeline all the way around to King Magni's room, you could reset the expiration timer by going near his throne. And then you would have one player stand near the door and you'd either sheep or fear them so they get forced through. And what they would find ah, would be an abandoned tunnel that's system. That's so clever. The core of Ironforge, this remnant of the original Alpha. And this cool. is one of the ultimate secret hidden areas in the game. So Old Ironforge literally sits, um, I guess I'm not surprised, right on top of a magma pool coming from within the mountain. Interesting. And what they would find would be an abandoned tunnel system leading to the core of Ironforge, this remnant of the original Alpha. Huh. And this is one of the ultimate secret hidden areas in the game that players would glitch through. Going up the stairs, you have this sort of ritual area and taking a right at the fork, it sort of loops around, and you have this... Pre That's the area where... Isn't that the area where Magni got turned to diamond? Areas in the game that players would glitch through. This area right here, that has, like, giant crystals in this fucking ceiling? Yeah, who would have thought? Going up the stairs, you have this sort of... <laughs> like, what the fuck? These are sketchy-ass-looking crystals, what the fuck? ...of ritual area, and taking a right at the fork, it sort of loops around, and you have this precarious climb along some ridges, overhanging a pit of lava. As players would eventually find, this area would be finished mm. in the Cataclysm expansion. I like that, uh, I like that thing over there. With the planet with the rings around it. That's cool. And how this book has a sun and a moon on this pillar. Huh. Interesting pages. Magni has open. I know that's the way they're made, but... Where? Yeah, interesting runes. I figured that went without saying. Magni is crystallized due to a curse until the Battle of... A curse. Yeah. I like the blue crystals all around him. Lava. As players would eventually find, this area would be finished in the Cataclysm expansion, where... Mm-hmm. Magni is crystallized due to a curse until the Battle of Azeroth, where... He starts performing sexual favors for an addictive drug called Azerite. Tap him. I can sense Azerite nearby. In the last episode, <laughs> we went over some areas that would eventually be finished in the first expansion, the Burning Crusade, such <laughs> as Karazhan or Kolthalas. But I can there's sense much more. Azerite in fact, nearby. All of the Outland was planned to be in vanilla, and it was just later pushed back to the Burning Crusade again due to the time constraints. But what you're looking at here is the original Hellfire Peninsula, which is as far as they made it. It's pretty recognizable, but at the same time different. It has more elements of like a shattered Tenan jungle. 
It got, kind of goes to show like the big roots Time constraints and the the fungal stuff all over the place. The chopped down trees. You just see more of the forest that used to be there. Whereas in, in the actual game, it's pretty much completely eradicated. But what you're looking at here is the original Hellfire Peninsula. 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 <laughs> Yo, old Hellfire Peninsula. Hell yeah. Which is as far as they made it. Is pretty recognizable, but at the same time different. Here's what the original Dark Portal looked like before they... Yeah, interesting robed hooded figures. We've seen these in many places. Dude, look at these giant these giant thorned roots coming out of the fucking mountains and walls, bro. That's wild. Literally. And the infinity serpent. They actually added stairs. Here's Honor Hold. Zeth Gore. The area overall seems to be much more open and there are more lingering signs of life compared to its Burning Crusade counterpart. Yeah. You may recognize the reuse of the giant mushrooms from the Eastern Plague Lands. The Pools yeah. of Agonar are also still present, although his remains are much smaller compared to the final release. And off the map, past the void, can be found some Silithid hides, like what would you find in Silithus? And even yeah, that's very strange. This looks like Tanaris. And some ruins from Tanaris. The zone yeah. overall was absolutely huge, and it must have been a really big blow to put so much into it for it to ultimately never see the light of day. Similarly, we also have what people refer to as Old Outland. This is a much smaller entry, and of all places, you'll actually find it in the Dead Mines. By clipping through the wall in the beginning and doing some tricky floating aim just right, you land on target to a pretty large mass of land, but with really only one thing going on at the center here, with a collection of some of the floating trees that were also found in the old Hellfire Peninsula. Huge crystals underneath over this them. Void chasm. So this is clearly just... The crystallization of energy is a common theme in certain areas. Ungaro Crater, Sholazar Basin. Hmm. Crystals are really important. Real important. And how they're generated and what they're used for. A bit of experimenting by the developers back in the day. That didn't really amount to too much, but it became one of the more iconic hidden areas for explorers willing to boundary break. Not really sure for its potential in Classic Plus. Jump in! Just a cool area that I thought was worth mentioning. Jump but in! zones weren't the only thing that were pushed back. In fact, as far as pre-alpha, it was planned that players would be able to level from 1 to 70 in vanilla through those missing zones. The Dragon and Isles. One of them was going to be the Dragon Isles. The Dragon Isles. The Dragon Isles. Called a dragon. Dragon. Okay. Second of all, look at that big Nautilus type uh, temple. That's ba This is basically what got turned into uh, what do they call it? Storm Song Temple of the Storms or what? what the fuck was that shit called? What the fuck was that dungeon called? Shrine of the Storm. So, in the latest expansion, Dragonfly... I think! Well, that's not the Dragon Isles, though. That's, that's in, that's in Kul Taras. Pretty close. Ish. Players have begun to explore the finished version of these isles, but as evidenced by this early development screenshot, they were supposed to be in the game in 2004. In fact, there even exists a map. As for why it was abandoned, yeah, as I mean, John Stats this... described in his book, The Warcraft Diary, it just didn't really make sense in the lore since the dragons are mostly good. You have Alex Straza as the Red Ranger, Ysera as the Green, Malagos the Blue, and Wait, Storm. what? I'm so they confused. What doesn't make sense? The latest expansion, Dragonflight, players have begun to explore the finished version of these isles, but as evidenced by this early development screenshot, they were supposed to be in the game in 2004, in fact, there even exists a map. As for why it was abandoned, as John Stats described in his book, The Warcraft Diary, it just didn't really make sense in the lore since the dragons are mostly good. Mostly good. It was supposed to be a raid, but the dragons are our allies. You can still do a raid. Like, did we forget about Argent Tournament? Like... The WoW Diary. Hmm. Might be interesting. You have Alex Straza as the Red Ranger, Ysera as the Green, Malagos the Blue, Nazdormu for Yellow, 
Did you know that the Power Rangers was two shows spliced together? The action portion was actually a Japanese program called Super Sentai, and then the teenage drama portion was filmed to give them backstories and personalities. Anyways, the point being here, the villain Dragonflight at the time was Deathwing, and the black Dragonflight, whom players had encounters with via the Anixia and the Farian fights. So having an entire continent with just one Dragonflight as an enemy felt like it would be too repetitive for players. Uh, shoutouts to the Warlords of Draenor, by the way, and probably due to time. Oh, yeah, see how he walks up in, like, front of them? In front of Kilrog and fucking Ner'zhul and fucking Kargath and fucking Blackhand. He's, like, the leader. Uh, shoutouts to the Warlords of Draenor, by the way. And We didn't even fight him. So fucking lame. Probably due to time constraints, the whole thing was scrapped until, as it turns out, 2022 with the dragon. And this looks a lot like fucking, uh, bizarre lore. Zulazar. Light expansion. They did get as far as some model and terrain work for the zone, with some completely unique buildings that never made it into the game, curiously enough. And as evidenced by the screenshot, there's even to be a raid here. I can only imagine that this giant palace would have been it. It's actually an absolutely enormous zone. The palace also looks very Black Empire. I'm just gonna say it. Enough. And Besides the pillars up at the front, like this sharp geometrical architecture is very uh, flight yeah. expansion. They did get as far as large monolithic. Some model and terrain work for the zone, with some completely unique buildings that never made it into the game. Curiously enough, and as like it looks like there's a secondary temple built in front of the big one. You see, it almost looks like this thing right here is like a secondary add-on, and that's the main, like, facility or whatever it is back there. And as evidenced by this. It was supposed to be on top of the head of a Black Empire monster. Well, at least visually, that's what you think. I'm pretty sure they were supposed to be Old God-esque temples. Yes. Screenshot did get as far as some model and terrain. You can pretty clearly see when looking at it. Some, the whole thing was scrapped. Yeah. Until, know. as it turns out, 2022 with... And as evidenced by the screenshot... There's even to be a raid here. I can only imagine that this giant palace would have been it. It's actually... Yeah, that section right there especially is like... This right here... That's... Yeah. That's... Makes me wonder where Blizzard got the idea for Tide Sage Raid and BFA. Actually you know? an absolutely enormous zone. So again, it must have been a pretty big blow. To it's like the Storm Song Valley, like I said, it's like the Shrine of the Storm. It looks like an old god, yes, but it's big and it's made out of stone. It's carved in from a mountain or something like that. All of this work into it, only. Jessica, thanks for the prime for two months. It. But that's about it for this episode. Thanks for letting me good be video. your tour guide. If you have more stuff that you think is worthy, there's more in that than I was expecting. Some good comments. shit. But I think between these two episodes that I put out recently. If Sod were to ever go down a classic, there's more to show out, here. Which who knows show if it will happen. It. I think it's safe to say that there's no shortage of content that was planned by the original developers. I think there's a key art visualization into. of the place. Oh, but that'd be nice to look at. That happens. I hope you at least found the video interesting. I think exploration is honestly sort of a lost art in today's goal oriented player base. And I kind of feel like doing more stuff like this. So you can expect more videos similar to this in the future. Um, we'll probably go expansion by expansion, and we'll look at everything that ended up on the cutting room floor. Regardless of all of that, like the video if you liked it, because a great I'll video. see you in the next one. Peace. Nice. I like his outro. That's cool.